Hi everyone. Up next we have a Tesla phone from Czechoslovakia. This video will be a little bit different. We're going to delve into more of the <coughs> interesting bits that you would find inside the phone and how to do certain adjustments. This phone is more or less as I got it off of eBay and it has not been cleaned up or anything. Uh, the wire on it is what was on it. Not in a very good state so that will be replaced. Also there's no uh, lead to the the block terminal which you can see at the back. But that's not a problem. Um, what influenced me was the white dial. The picture on the eBay showed this and I thought ah that brings back memories. So I looked in my box of stuff that I've got and lo and behold what do I find? A white dial. I always thought this was possibly off a check phone but wasn't too sure. Uh, the reverse side shows the innards and as I'm holding the phone it's going to be a little bit tricky but I want to point out certain bits. Here we have the regulator. This is um, has two weighted weights which are sprung loaded and normally to adjust them you would physically bend either outwards or inwards. If you, if you made it go inwards the speed would increase and putting it outwards it would slow down. Now on this one I'm going to try and get as close as I can with it still being in focus. What I'm using today is the Legria. It's my original uh, video for, um, camera. Now as you can see, and I'm saying, I wish I had another pair of hands but I haven't. Um, there you've got an adjuster and it goes around the outside of those springs. There's a spring there. And by moving it up or down you can increase or decrease the speed. So you don't need any uh, any adjusters, pliers or 81s, whatever you use to adjust it. You just move it up or down. That's the only dial I've seen this on of this type. Now leaving that we've got various spring sets. I'll just turn that. There we are. As you turn the dial, these springs operate. That's the dial off normals. And on the other side, you've got your pulsing springs. And each notch. Uh, represents a pulse. So you dial O you'd get 10 pulses. Now what is interesting this dial is reminiscent of certain continental phones. Um, it's obviously used extensively on the continent. It's a very well made dial the important pieces are made of brass. You've got your wheel to your, your governor which is brass. Not made of a plastic fibre. So there's less chance of it disintegrating. The terminations need to be cleaned up. They are soldered on. A lot of these dials it was actually screws that held the 
of the wire in place but on this one they were soldered now we talk of and I'm going to turn the tap off the taps dripping hold on a minute that's better nothing worse than a dripping tap I put that on for the cats they love to drink the water straight out the tap which weather's unique I don't know but uh, my ones do it they do get water in a dish but uh, they seem to prefer it out the tap anyhow back to the doll I do love talking and once again I will apologize for not being able to answer a lot of the the uh, the questions that I've had on the various videos I, I have a job to see stuff as I say I'm waiting for a cataract operation it's going to be a long time I think if I'm lucky to get it before September I think I'll be lucky if I get it at all so anyway I do apologize so obviously I'm making up by chatting more and giving more information where I can now as I say that was the uh, the continental style dial it's also a form of trigger dial now BT brought out what they call a trigger dial it took over from the slipping cam dial and what it is if I can demonstrate it I wish I had another pair of hands as I keep saying um, and I'll have to point it out this part here when it you wind the dial up to dial a number be it one or ten that flips up and engages in each of these tooth and as it, it uh, operates or moves every bump or well, bumps the easiest word it raises up and makes contact so you get your normal 10 pulses per second obviously under the control of the regulator 10 pulses per it's I think quite a good dial the spring is the the uh, the dial or, or is made to return under a spring under that tooth wheel to tighten up when you wind it up and when you let it go the spring unwinds and powers the dial back to the normal position I'd like to give it a bit clearer but um, unfortunately it's difficult when you're holding a holding a camera and trying to point out at the same time and also while we're on it I'm not a hundred percent today I've had about two or three weeks of a cold so in a way I feel a bit like death warmed up but I understand there's quite a few of these bugs going around anyhow that's the dial now it was interesting because it's exactly the same dial that is on this phone let's take the top away had it undone already here we have the inside same dial exactly the same it's got a T on the front as the other one has which obviously is for Tesla you see the wires on this one are soldered soldered onto to the wire that goes into the telephone itself and is also wired in as well which is also unusual normally they have a termination we've got a diagram have I got the right way around yes I've got the right way around which is always an added bonus whenever you pick up one of these oldish phones I suppose this one's fairly old 1930s 40s that era I would think well there's the actual diagram which is quite nice because from that you can have a look if it was faulty at all you'd be able to hopefully clear the fault 
So I've kept it on there a while so when it shows up it'll be there for a little bit of time. So there's the diagram. You can see the phone's made by Tesla. Tesla was a name which was used on very many electrical things, electronic things in Czechoslovakia. Um, I remember, I was somewhat younger, um, they imported light bulbs over the standard tungsten light bulbs and they were Czechoslovakian made by Tesla or well, they had that name Tesla. It's um, interesting they did this but they they were not bad bulbs they were well they weren't they were obviously made to get a bit of money because um, obviously I think things out, out there were a bit difficult and what we're talking about is the uh, the Czech, or what they call it now, it's not called Czechoslovakia, it's all changed. And um, it's hard for my brain to take it in. Anyhow, let's, uh, uh, the Czech Republic, we'll get it right in a minute. Now, leaving the dial, you've got the actual f telephone itself. Now, when you, when you pick up these phones, as I said before, they come as they are and it's interesting to see what is wrong how they can be repaired well this one obviously both the handset lead and the call to the um, the source the beat the, uh, the block terminal needs to be replaced you can either put a modern one in or hopefully pick up a braided one or something like that. Um, I tend to go for the uh, electrics and stuff like that. That interests me, the designs and that whether it's got a plastic cord or a, a non-plastic is really immaterial but it's nice if you can get something with the original. Now on here you've got a, a bell obviously And what I noticed was it didn't work. When I say it didn't work, the hammer didn't hit either of the gongs. Well, these gongs are made to be adjustable. If you look down inside, you see two screws, one for each gong. I think I'm pointing that out okay. And that one there, it's a bit difficult to, to point in the right direction. Anyhow, the hole that they go through is oval sh shape or el uh, elongated. So you can move the gong either in or out depending on what position. I'll show this if I can loosen that one up. The, dial, the, the, the gong can be made to move closer to the hammer or further away. Ideally, you want the hammer to strike the bell, or the gong, but not rest on it. This means it, 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 the, you operate it and it goes ping, and the hammer leaves the bell by a fraction of an inch, I say, is very small. Probably you could get a couple of sheets of paper between the hammer and the bell. It mustn't rest on the bell. If it does, you'll get a flattened note. It doesn't sound very nice and uh, it's not crisp. Now, obviously, do the same as it strikes the other gong. So they touch, make the noise, and then lift off very, very slightly. That way the bell rings and you don't get it sort of the thing touching it. Also, make sure you've got no, no extraneous 
wires and things touching the gong which you have here. They would certainly mess the sound up. They wouldn't sound nice and crisp. These are all things to be taken into account. Now with these I couldn't adjust the gongs like the way I've just said. So the travel on the bell hammer operated by these two they move right there was just in not, not enough travel for the hammer to touch the bell so there's another adjuster on reverse of this which is a screw and it moves allows this to be moved in and out or further away and closer to the actual pole faces. I've never seen this before on any bells but it's on this one so get the right setting that's not at the moment once I go back a bit further no, the other bell would have to be adjusted. You can see it just strikes if I can do it it's awkward with one hand. Anyhow, <laughs> that's the adjuster. It's a screw on the reverse side. Don't touch that screw. It's the one underneath. And also, that is a magnet. And that's needed to, to make the bell work. Without that, it wouldn't sound very good, if at all. So that's the, the bell in a general talk from there. And also, on this phone, the bells are that shape. Normally, they're round. To get these in the space required, they've had to be oval shape. So a great thought has gone into this. That's what operates when you put the receiver down. On here you have your anti-side tone coil. Now, the reason we've got the anti-side to side tone coil is to make sure that who's using the phone will know that the phone's live. You can pick it up, all right, you'll hear dial tone, but if you didn't hear dial tone, you'd still know that the phone was alive. Because as you spoke or breathed, you would hear some of that coming back on the earpiece. So as you spoke, the majority of the sound obviously went out to the wire and out to the caller or receiver. Um, but a little bit is fed back into the receiver and it had the influence of making you speak up and also it, you knew that the phone was alive and that's what the anti-side tone coil does it also balances out the signal the main use is to get what you call side tone the way of trying this out is to listen on the phone and then just press the uh, rest down and as it disconnects you hear it go off you know it's working I'm hoping I'm making myself understood here we've got the spring set which operates when you put the receiver down next to it also made by Tesla is the capacitor and the purpose of the capacitor or the main purpose of the capacitor is to allow AC part 2 coming up 